I would like to share with you a beautiful story that I heard recently, which I think really has a tremendous impact on all of us. And I'll tell you why. The Rebbe, before 1950, when he was called the Ramash, and he had come to this country in 1940 and served as the assistant for his father-in-law, the previous Rebbe, who during his later years had become quite ill. And this story was told by one of the rabbis whom had met the Rebbe as the Rebbe came down in the elevator from visiting his father-in-law. And the story goes like this. The Rebbe met this young student, at the time he was a rabbinical student, and told him, would you like to hear what I just heard from my father-in-law? And of course, the rabbinical student was very excited that he had an opportunity to hear this directly from the Rebbe. So the Rebbe said, I had a, a real dilemma. And the dilemma was when I came to this country in 1940, I decided I really wanted to try to reach out to fellow Jews. And I would bring people in from outside and I would bring them to the minion. I would put on tefillin with them. I would give them an aliyah to the Torah. And I would do various things with them to really try to be makarev them, to try to bring them closer to Yiddishkeit. And a couple of the senior Chabad Hasidim, the rabbis, criticized me for it. And they told me that, why are you doing this? You're just encouraging them, them in what they're doing and what their way of life is and the fact that they, they're not observant and you're making them feel good about whatever status they are, not necessarily motivating them to grow and to become better Jews or more observant in different ways. So the Rebbe said he was perplexed and he had a question. And of course, whenever he had a spiritual question, he would go to his father-in-law in order to be able to request clarification. So he went and he spoke to them. And the previous Rebbe, his father-in-law, told them the following. He said, God has many children. And just like a parent who has many children, our love to our children does not decrease or increase the more children we have. For every child is a special diamond, and every child has a special place in our heart. And as a result, when one child comes along, though, who has a little bit of a problem, or perhaps has some special needs, whatever it might be, or requires some extra attention, then what does the parent do? It's not that the parent loves or loves them more than other children, but the parent will spend extra time and try to really go the extra yard to do what needs to be done with that child. So he said that the same thing applies to God's relationship with his people, that God has many children and he loves every single Jew and he holds tire and dear every Jewish neshama, every soul. But sometimes there are certain neshamas, certain souls that for whatever reason, due to Shkacha Pratis or Divine Providence, are like a Tinuk Shanishpa. They're perhaps distant from their Jewish roots. Perhaps they didn't have opportunities to learn or to study. Perhaps they just got turned off by various circumstances. So they require a little bit of extra effort and extra time in order to be able to reconnect them and help them feel comfortable with their Jewish heritage and be side by side with their Jewish soul. So the Rebbe, the previous Rebbe, looked at the Rebbe and said to the Rebbe, I want you to behave like God. I want you to reach out to these people and go that extra yard and do what it takes to show that extra love and to be able to really make them feel part of the Jewish people the way they really are, but perhaps have not had the opportunity to really have that feeling come to the surface and feel it fully in their lives. And this was the lesson that the Rebbe received. And ever since then, the Rebbe never turned back. The Rebbe followed that advice and pursued what he knew in his heart was the right thing, but he only had questions because of the reactions of others. But we all know the rest of the story, that the Rebbe began a major campaign, which began, of course, then, but was followed through when he himself became the Rebbe's successor, the, the seventh Lubavitcher Rebbe in 1951. And as a result, thousands and tens of thousands and hundreds of thousands of Jews were the beneficiaries of that story of the pre previous Rebbe advising the Rebbe how he should behave in his life. Have a good day.